Next, now Republican Congressman Mark Meadows of North Carolina. He's the chairman of the conservative House Freedom Caucus. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us. Wolf, it's great to be with you. Thanks so much. So what's your reaction to the Trump administration's decision to rescind DACA affecting these 800,000 young people? Well, obviously, I support the president's position here, uh, Wolf. One of the, the things that perhaps is not getting reported a whole lot is that the jurisprudence that's out there would suggest that this was going to go away anyway. So it's incumbent upon Congress to act. And so as the president took a decisive action, he did it in a way that gives six months for Congress to deal with it. You saw there Dick Durbin and Lindsey Graham working together already to try to look at some potential legislative fix. But more importantly, Importantly, uh, any solution is going to have to be uh, start really with securing our southern border. So as we look at this, uh, we're getting calls on both ends of the spectrum, Wolf, as you might imagine. Those that said, well, we should have left it just like it was. And yet there's another group that says, why did you give it six months? We're a nation of laws. They came here illegal. They need to uh, be sent back. Uh, sent back now. So as we look at this, it's critical that Congress acts. I think that you'll see uh, a real expeditious way that we try to deal with this. Uh, I, I want you to listen once again. Uh, here's the president just moments ago speaking about these 800,000 dreamers. Listen to this. Well, I have a great heart for the folks we're talking about, a great love for them. And people think in terms of children, but they're really young adults. Uh, I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. And I can tell you, in speaking to members of Congress, they want to be able to do something and do it right. And really, we have no choice. We have to be able to do something. And I think it's going to work out very well. And long term, it's going to be the right solution. So you agree with the president? Uh, do you agree uh, with him when he says, uh, I have a love for these people, and hopefully Congress will be able to help them and do it properly, in other words, allow them to remain here in the United States. Well, I, I do know uh, personally from a standpoint and having uh, spoken to a number of people in the West Wing, uh, including the president on this particular issue, uh, there is a real compassionate side of things, where his, his heart goes out, he understands that a lot of these people are here not uh, really didn't intend to break the law. In fact, the law was broken on, on behalf uh, of maybe a parent or somebody else getting them in. And so it was really a, a, a fight between that and the constitutional principles that, that we have, you know, if you allow a president only to make those laws, we've got a problem. I, I'll, I'll remind you, when President Obama talked about deferred action, he said that this was a temporary stopgap measure intending for Congress to act. And so this president has said, you know, it's the, the duty of Congress to pass those laws so that we, we uh, get rid of any ambiguity that's out there, Wolf. And so as we look at that, I can tell you, it did go back and forth in West Wing. The right decision was made. It's now incumbent upon members of Congress in both the House and the Senate to act and deal with this to make sure that we have secure borders, but that we treat people with compassion as well. Because the, your, your leader, the Speaker, Paul Ryan, he said at the heart of this issue are young people who came to this country through no fault of their own. And for many of them, it's the only country they know. When all is said and done, do you want legislation, Congressman, that will allow these 800,000 young people who have gone through the entire process, provided all their personal information, who are now working or in school or serving in the U.S. military, do you want them to be able to remain in the United States, have a pathway to legal status and a pathway to U.S. citizenship? Well, when we look at this, it gets back to what I said earlier, Wolf. You know, right now we're dealing with 800,000 people. If we don't secure our southern border, how many are we dealing with? At what point does amnesty become the de facto immigration policy? And so what we've got to make sure of is if we're going to deal with this in terms of either a legal status or anything else that you were mentioning, we've got to make sure that we have E-Verify in place, we have a, a border security, that we understand those that want to do us harm can't get into this country, and yet somehow we've put that in a different silo and said, well, we're not going to talk about that. It's all part of the immigration uh, debate that is going ongoing that DACA and certainly uh, our border security has to come together as we try to resolve this. So, so are you okay, uh, and I just want to be precise on this, Congressman, assuming there's no other legislation deporting these 800,000 dreamers? 
Well, at, at this particular point, if we don't take action, they will be deported. And so it's incumbent is that upon okay us. With, is that okay with you? Well, it, it is. It, it's the rule of law. It's not a matter of what I think. I'm one member of 535 members. It, what we have to do is we have to be a nation of laws, and we look at that. You know, we can't just say, well, we're going to ignore this one and, and have this other law put in place. And so do I want necessarily that to happen? I mean, my, my mind goes to a person that, that I just talked to in Mitchell County back home in North Carolina who had somebody that was really concerned about this issue. But yet what happens is our inaction creates a crisis. So it's time that we move and we, we work on immigration. I know Tom Cotton has already put forth there are a number of other uh, real level-headed people out there trying to do that. And as we see that, it's got to be part of a comprehensive package. We work best on deadlines, as you know. We're up against deadlines right now with the debt ceiling and funding the government. If we didn't have this deadline, I'm afraid nothing would get, get done, just like nothing got done in the last administration. Well, well let, me, let me just be precise. What would it take for you, just one member of Congress, to support letting these 800,000 young people live here in the United States legally, have a pathway to citizenship. If, if there's funding for the wall with Mexico, would that be enough? Would you then support this legislation, allowing them to stay here for, and, and provide them with what you call amnesty? Yeah, well, Ronald Reagan said you never uh, get in trouble by not answering a hypothetical wolf. And so what I am going to say is, is this. We've got to start with border security in the wall. If we have a, a comprehensive program that not only deals with our, our, secu uh, our secure southern border, but also looks at what we need to do in terms of E-Verify and a number of other areas where we, we have this situation, and, and really with a merit-based legal immigration system, if we look at all of that, then I'm willing to look in a compassionate way on how we handle this this DACA issue. I think we will. I think there's a number of us uh, perhaps that get painted in one corner or another, but at the end of the day, I think we'll come across uh, with a good solution that not only handles it in a compassionate way, but finally deals with it. You know, we've been trying to deal with this for 30 or 40 years, even dating back to Ronald Reagan. It's time that we finally deal with it. Will your party, the Republican Party, pay a price if these 800,000 young people are deported? You know, I think if you answer anything in political terms, certainly there is a constituency out there that wants you to deal with it one way. There's another constituency that wants you to deal with it another way. Uh, this particular issue, I think we have a, a bigger fallout if we don't secure our southern when it comes from our party standpoint. It will be a tough task. I know the speaker originally said that he wouldn't move any legislation without the majority of the majority being supportive uh, of a measure on immigration. And so uh, that means that we've all got to get together in a room and make sure that we work it because uh, at this point, you're not going to pass it with 180 Democrats and 50 or 60 Republicans. It'll hopefully be a true bipartisan solution. We'll see what happens. Uh, all right, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us.